Before we begin the session, revisiting a very few important housekeeping notes, please remember to silence all of your devices. If you haven't done so yet, please download the AWS Events app from the App Store and also share your feedback on this session through the app. Your feedback is very vital to us and also helps us to plan the future events. The AWS session you see today is also being recorded and will be available a couple of weeks after the event. So please feel free to utilize it. Now for this next session on how cloud can help India innovate the healthcare space, please welcome Mrs. Gurpreet Kaur Puri, who is the global head for public sector at ENU Intel. My name is Gurpreet Kaur and I lead the public sector from Intel. Intel has a very transformational engagement across all the sectors, like transportation, finance, energy, and healthcare. We have many use cases and key initiatives where we work for the finance department, like creating algorithm for the fraud detection. In transportation, we have many video analytics use cases by providing the safety and surveillance. In energy, we have done a lot of use cases on the retail pump automation. But today's topic is healthcare. Why healthcare? Healthcare is a very important vertical in India market today. Healthcare is continues to be Intel focus area where we are trying to build more AI based scalable technology. We have the healthcare initiative COVID vaccination platform on AWS that built with Intel partnership where that has impacted the 1.3 billion lives of the people. But before we moving on to the healthcare, we would like to understand what are the healthcare core issues? What are the trends and how it will be impactful for Indian market? The so core issues are mainly where the increasing cost of healthcare system, the shortage of quality workforces, aging population and chronic disease. We really need to put together with our ecosystem to build up a solution where we can deliver a global healthcare system to our Indian market. Intel is taking one step forward in powering the smart hospitals, accelerating drug discovery, and modernizing the digital infrastructure, starting from data center to edge to cloud. So we have our in-house expert to talk about this healthcare industry but before we call them on stage, I would like to play a short video for the audience. I'm a sick very patient from last week because our health will be clear. We to get admitted some lungs problem. to start this trust in the year 2009 with the sole intention to serve the kidney failure patients. And today the present scheme of Arogeshi doesn't allow dialysis to be done to other state patients. Under Arushman scheme, it is allowed. So now with the help of Minfi, we will be able to collect this data and we are just starting that our 14 affiliated centers and 9 centers let it be linked first. Then we will approach the government saying that this is the benefits. As we are running uh, nine centers and uh, number of patient dialysis stations, uh, we are not able to tracking center to center data. We don't have any uh, visibility, we don't have any integration of center to center data. Even though we can save the one life also that is helps to us and uh, uh, that really happy to us. And in the future, we are also planning to uh, bring out various solutions in the benefit of the patients. And uh, these solutions can be either in the form of uh, creating a large database by which we can study the details of the patient's profile, what are the dialysis uh, modalities, what has been done, what are the uh, various forms of uh, uh, treatment options which have been given to them. This will, uh, whole thing will be ga gathered information by Minfi technology, which will help us in uh, understanding the uh, various aspects uh, of this uh, dialysis and definitely uh, a mint-free technology we are looking forward and we are excited 
to understand the patients in a better way. Minfi Technologies, as their technology partner, is attempting to solve these large and important problems for Mahavir Jain Rani Foundation Trust using Amazon Web Services. In the first phase of the project, the focus is on digitization of provider and patient workflows. In the next phases of the product development, we will enable patient onboarding to Ayushman Bharat Digital Mission through Ayushman Bharat Health Account. We will leverage Intel's high-performance computing technology to add predictive analytics and insights based on machine learning models for disease intervention. We will provide automated treatment and lifestyle recommendations to slow down decline and hopefully reverse the stage progression where possible. Healthcare as an industry as well as a vertical continues to be a very important focus for Intel as well as AWS. Intel today focuses on powering smart hospitals, accelerating scientific discovery from edge to cloud, helping in data discovery with techniques around artificial intelligence and machine learning to help with better and accelerated and accurate patient data. Not only do we provide our technology, but we optimize and co-engineer with AWS to continue to solve our customers' business challenges on a daily basis. At Minfi, we are on a pioneering journey to build a better world. We focus on our customers and customers' customers. Healthcare is one of our key segments, and we focus on patients, doctors, and healthcare staff. Intel and AWS have built incredible technology and offer a diverse set of cloud services. Minfi, as a cloud-native systems integrator, is able to harness the power of Intel and AWS and is able to bridge the gap between technology and healthcare specialists. I think there are a lot of seats empty here. Maybe if you can come closer, this could be a small meeting. Please feel free to join us here because this is going to be a more interactive, informal session and we can take questions in between as well. It's okay. Before uh, we start, I just wanted to even ask if it's okay if I can stand for a while. Uh, how many of you are wearing any kind of a wearable or a Fitbit or, or counting your steps? Uh, a lot of you. Okay. I think we'll come to that. It's going to be a very interesting discussion. Maybe another question. How many of you had desserts during the lunch? <laughs> oh my god. Okay, there are still a lot of people. Good that this is happening, this session is happening post lunch. I'm sure when you hear the doctor and he's going to give his advice, you know you would not have had those deserts perhaps. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, doctor, we'll, we'll start. Yeah. Uh, so I, I'll start with a few maybe trigger questions and then we'll take uh, from the audience and, and as experts from Intel and Mavi. This is phenomenal what we just saw, uh, what your trust is doing. Uh, I think all of us are, as we said, right, having wearables, you know, caring for our own health, uh, watching our steps. Uh, but when we talk about innovation in healthcare, uh, what can be really, really disruptive? And if we can really take care of something, a chronic condition, which could be life-threatening, and if we really want life extension, and if we want to do it really at a mass scale, and scale for India, and really at affordable levels for low cost, that would truly really mean innovation. And I think that's what we're going to discuss today. How do we really bring innovation in healthcare for India and how solutions what we develop in India can help beyond India. So with that, so maybe we start about, uh, if you can talk about your own organization, your association, and how did you come along last several years? What's yeah. been the journey like for you? We started this uh, organization way back in uh, 2009 with uh, 16 um, trust members and a uh, lot of dialysis supportive staff who are also involved. And uh, initially we started with uh, 20 machines. Now over the last uh, 10 years, now we have almost reached 200 dialysis machines. 
which caters to about 15,000 dialysis per month. And uh, recently we have uh, crossed as an NGO organization 1 million dialysis uh, at a low, very low cost of only uh, $4 per dialysis, which is uh, very innovative and uh, uh, very uh, satisfactory to us because sometimes we see a lot of uh, breadwinners of the family who are uh, suffering from this uh, kidney disease and uh, we are able to support them. And uh, many of the family members are also very uh, deeply uh, emotional and attached to us. And uh, in the way forward, it was very satisfactory to us over the last uh, 12 years because this is a very huge number which nowhere in the world this has been achieved. And I think uh, we are all grateful and as a team we could achieve this. This is inspirational. Uh, in your own time frame, have you really looked at extension of life uh, for such patients and uh, has that changed over the years, in the last few decades versus now? Yeah, the life expectancy of these patients has improved. Now we have seen some patients who have been there for dialysis uh, for more than 15 years, 16 years. Initially, uh, dialysis means uh, something like a death sentence. Previously, we have seen uh, M.G. Ramchandran way back in Bombay Hospital, when he was dialyzed, people used to say that is the death sentence. Dialysis means death sentence. But now we are able to move forward, we are able to help a lot of people. A lot of people also come back to and say us, uh, we want our relatives to uh, stay with us, because that makes a lot of difference uh, to their families. Because uh, in, during COVID also we have noticed uh, losing a family member is a very depressing thing for any, any of one of us. I think most of our families have been destroyed in COVID and uh, this is what they come back and tell us that uh, you are able to make uh, one of my family members live with us and that is, it is uh, a lot gratifying to our family because the mere presence of a family member will make a lot of difference to most of us and for the family uh, which are involved with kidney disease. This is not a one part of a, a kidney issue is that uh, it is not like a cardiovascular symptom like you have you put a stent and then it is relieved. You keep on coming live throughout and uh, you keep on coming for dialysis every third day, every second day. And this is a continuous process. There will be lots of last uh, turnover of patients who get burnt out, their attenders get burnt out. But in the process, when you are able to help them to bring down the cost, that makes a huge impact to the society and you are able to uh, achieve your passion of being a doctor or uh, the trust uh, or the uh, dialysis support staff who were all there. It brings us a lot of gratifying satisfaction that uh, we have to give back something to society. It is not that we, we anyway, we learn uh, whatever money we make, but something giving back to the society is very important to all of us. And uh, with uh, maybe these innovative technologies, we would be able to um, bring a lot more uh, research into this and we'll have a lot of Indian data as well. So, you just heard Dr. Shashidhar Gurpreet. I think this is very interesting. I think you very briefly touched about the overview of, from Intel, what Intel is doing in healthcare. Uh, anything you would like to share from healthcare and life sciences perspective, globally or in India, uh, which can offer some solutions or the vision for Intel in, in this domain? No, absolutely. I think that Sir has rightly said that giving back to society. And for this initiative, Intel CSR team is working on the investments to support healthcare projects. Mm -hmm. We have many great examples. One of the example is uh, from the Singapore-based startup who has actually developed the cloud-based AI solution for the retina to analyze the condition in such a short span of time. The second one is from G Healthcare who built up the AI algorithm that used the open window distribution for the X-ray device machine to analyze the or flag the critical illness. So this is really a great initiative towards the technology, which we really wanted to give our global healthcare system. Yeah, very interesting, very inspirational stories from outside of India. Uh, maybe further, this you just spoke about last 10 or 15 years. Uh, what's your vision going forward now? Have you set any goals for yourself? I mean, one million is a very, very big number, which has been yeah. achieved. And as you said, this could be a world record. Uh, how are you seeing next five to 10 years uh, as a trust? And yeah. In the vision forward, uh, we would like to, inc uh, definitely we'll like to improve our uh, uh, quality of the dialysis because as the numbers go up, uh, there's a lot of demand from the patient side, from the uh, hospital side, from the government sector as well. There'll be a lot of challenges. 
and uh, definitely we'll be able to cater it in a better way uh, if this teamwork continues like this and uh, support from all the uh, trust members, dialysis staff itself. And we'll be able to reach uh, 2 million very shortly. And uh, with the increasing demand, especially there's a exponentially increased rise of uh, CKD patients in the last 10-15 uh, years. We have been seeing a lot of young people who are coming with kidney disease. And now the new entity is called CKDU, that is CKD of unknown etiology, where we are not able to exactly trace this is the cause for the kidney disease, whether it is because of the water in some places, some are st stone belt areas, and especially in uh, Telangana, uh, Andhra, there is one area, particularly in Srikakulam districts and all, where we are not ab able to exactly predict. There is a lot of research coming from Harvard. They have taken samples and uh, they have analyzed, but not ab to, uh, able to come to any conclusion. So, so in the over the years, we want to exactly study what is our Indian data. We are lacking in Indian data. What we are only we are studying, like uh, dialysis population of the U.S. system, like U.S. RDS. We take uh, data from the U.S. RDS. We say their dialysis life expectancy is so much. But Indian data we are lacking. And that is what we want to now go into more of research. We should be able to analyze our patients, what we are going through, and in the future we would like to also. Um, concentrate more on preventive aspects. So now what we are doing is only treatment aspect, diagnosing aspect. Whenever the patient comes, we just wheel in, we put the dialysis catheters, dialyze them and then send them. But what we are lacking is we are not taking up the preventive aspect. We are not going to the media or going to the various uh, um, uh, schools and colleges, train them that uh, this is the initial symptom avoid smoking, avoid your uh, change your lifestyle patterns. And most of us in this hall are all stressed out. We have some stress factor which we all need to change and uh, we need to be in the holistic approach like what uh, the government also says that we need to uh, bring up yoga, meditation and all these things and uh, be in total as a complete uh, solution to the patient. What we are giving is only treatment, diagnosis. But we want as a whole to include everything, holistic approach, that is what we want to uh, cater to. And with the advance in uh, uh, recent modalities, with the latest technology, we should uh, get all the details of the patient. Sometimes we don't take their history. A lot of young people come to us with kidney disease, and we take a detailed history, send their parents out, they're smoking, they're taking a lot of cocaine substance. Uh, all this is uh, very depressing now because they say because of our stress levels, we are taking cocaine, we are taking smoking. We, uh, we have recently done a study in a small uh, segment of a, uh, 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 this thing, population. We have seen a lot of youngsters are smoking. That is a very uh, big factor that which is leading to them to kidney disease in addition to uh, genetic factors. So it's more alarming that uh, what we used to see in 50s, 60s, now we are seeing in 2030s. That is, uh, we want to now think about uh, diagnosing early, prevention, teaching them how to uh, prevent the progression rather than the treatment aspect. Well. I, I think these goals are very, very large and very audacious and, and very, very right required because you want to make the treatment and, and then also sort of look at personalization, if I understand right, yeah, yeah. because of their age profile and then the way they're coming from, coming from. and then also look at preventive part of it. Yes. Uh, that's, that's going to be very, very big. I think a lot of people here are cloud specialists and technologists yeah. who would like to contribute, but they fully do not understand the domain and the pain points as you spoke about. But one thing here where we talk about machine learning capabilities, where the exact cause is not known. Yes. I think you just spoke about CKD, you. you yeah. I think most of us may have heard of CKD, but yeah. uh, may, may not known uh, the CKD, you, you, which is the unknown cause. Yeah. We don't even know which direction to actually look, go and explore yeah. and really look at the underlying root cause. Yes. That's where I think uh, a lot of data when we collect it yeah. uh, and have machine learning algorithms applied to it from Intel, from AWS, uh, somebody like ourselves, uh, we can actually get some direction yeah. that we can pinpoint and say this is, could be the possible causes. Yeah. At least and then doctor specialists and healthcare specialists yeah. can go deeper into that topic. Yeah. Uh, this, is, this is something very, very yeah. exciting. I think how, uh, I'm not sure Intel, Intel has any thoughts on this or any experience you would like to share about the scalability aspect from 1 million to 2 million uh, is a very, very large number in few large cities or of that population actually. Uh, so that's the number we are talking about and the other part of uh, handling this large amounts of data 
uh, with machine learning capabilities. Any, any thoughts from Intel? No, it's absolutely, Vikram. I think data is very integral, right? Mm -hmm. Where, you know, the effective ways of using the technology to analyze the data and using that AI and ML learning, especially for the, for the patients where we actually fetching the data from the one database. That's require a you know, co-engineering work, which we definitely do with our partners like Minfi and AWS to collaborate together on the field. So absolutely, this is a great initiative where Intel is looking forward to work together with our ecosystem to expand and provide this scalable technology. Very interesting. And, and so you spoke about some of this, maybe in, right in the foreseeable future, next three to five years you would like to attain. Uh, what are your thoughts on really future of healthcare, uh, future of sort of medicine? Uh, I think there is a lot talk about uh, technical devices, uh, which can become act and mimic like organs. There is artificial pancreas, which combines a continuous glucose monitoring, yeah. plus the insulin pump, which can act as a artificial pancreas. Uh, I've also seen something about artificial kidney. Yeah. Uh, what is your view as a specialist, as a nephrologist? Do you see, we'll be able to see this. Yeah, this has been a dream to most of our dialysis patients, and we commonly encounter this question, like, when will the artificial kidney come to India? This has been initially launched in uh, Italy and uh, currently it's still in a trial process. Uh, it is something like a, a small kind of a dialyzer which you can wear it uh, as a belt or something like that and that will act as a kidney function. And uh, at present the cost is huge and they're working on how to make it uh, at a lesser cost. And definitely uh, uh, it will be a dream for every, any dialysis patient that uh, you know, you just wear that uh, machine kind of thing and uh, you need not come to the dialysis center and that does the process. Uh, definitely, uh, future is uh, uh, promising and uh, with innovative technologies, definitely uh, there should be a solution to all these things and uh, with the more uh, uh, number of patients' data, we'll be able to exactly analyze and see what best we can do for the patient because uh, telling them to come for dialysis for the long term is a little uh, depressing for most of them. But uh, these are promising technologies. Definitely it is a promising technology. And, and this is going to be life-saving? It will be a life-saving procedure, yeah. Excellent. Well, anything from your side on, on this? Because we spoke about one particular capability, which is either pancreas or it is about, uh, let's say, kidney here. It's one organ where technology can come in. But I think there's a lot of conversation about human and AI coming together. Uh, any, again, thoughts from you on uh, how this is going to operate, not only at organ level, but how should they coexist? Uh, I think, Vikram, before I say anything, I, uh, we have a you know, powerful video to uh, run on. So I think I should play the video first. Okay. Let's see. You can see this. We're really trying to empower people with disabilities to interact with the world rather than their machine. We are a human AI research lab to help people overcome challenges. We open the world to communities that are left behind. Everything starts with the question, what does the user need? The idea is to really make technology that understands people better. We developed ACAT Assistive Context-Aware Toolkit to enable users to totally control their Windows machine with a very limited input, being the equivalent of a push button. You could imagine somebody blinking, moving their eyebrow. Those are kind of typical movement from the face that you can actually detect with a camera. Intel had a relationship with Stephen Hawking that lasted for about three decades. Stephen had good control over his cheek muscle. So we needed to translate that motion into a trigger to enable him to do anything with his machine. Writing, surfing the web, giving lectures. The work that we do in the Human and AI Research Lab is really trying to look for opportunities for AI to assist humans in different aspects of their lives. It is a multidisciplinary team. We have ethnographers, we have designers, we have people who work on AI, sensing in every form. Brain-computer interface is what we're working on now. If you really can't move any single muscle, because you're totally paralyzed. The only thing that we can tap into is your brain waves. 
Imagine thinking about this item on the menu or thinking about the letter A. And we're really trying to learn how AI can actually help bring about a much better future for humanity. The opportunities for people of all abilities are endless. So this is really impactful. Uh, I think we are creating a capabilities with our co-engineering uh, partners where early detection, prevention, and compliance and caregiving is possible across healthcare sector. Yeah, this looks like science fiction. I <laughs> does, do not know that this is possible even now. This is great to see. Uh, I think we have spoken a lot about technology, and I think, Doctor, you touched about another aspect very briefly, and you spoke about lifestyle. And given that we are in India, uh, as doctors, I think you trust the modern medicine. That's how the doctors in healthcare have been trained. Uh, but there is a lot of ancient wisdom here, traditional medicine in India, uh, and lifestyle, diet, yoga, meditation. Uh, as you spoke about stress, uh, how do you see, uh, you know, as an approach, uh, your trust is actually adopting uh, for patients and their caregivers and their families? Uh, and, and is that part of your prescription, or is that uh, more sort of a guidance? How, how do you deal with that? Yeah, we have uh, done some studies on uh, yoga and meditation uh, in certain of our dialysis population. This has been uh, 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 supported by some of the uh, 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 teachers of uh, Jain Foundation. Uh, they have certain gurus who have prescribed a certain form of meditation. Uh, we have studied their uh, uh, blood pressure levels. We have seen their oxygenation levels. We have found that definitely yoga, meditation, there's a lot of difference in this patient because they are able to sleep better, their anxiety comes down, their stress levels come down. See, something whenever you do in yoga, meditation, uh, we have noticed that uh, your stress levels goes down because there's something called you have a body happy hormones which will be released. And whenever the happy hormones are released, you feel better and you will be able to sleep better. And uh, which uh, most of us lack uh, the sleep. Even last night, uh, <laughs> we are definitely, I'm sure, uh, all three of us wouldn't have slept because of this talk. That is how our stress levels are. <laughs> Most of us have that. Uh, it is natural. Though uh, we are good at our fields, but the stress is there. So this stress can come down only with the holistic approach of uh, the patient, which most of us are lacking in the clinical side, because uh, uh, to be partly blamed, it is only because the uh, people who are providing health care and there are very few people, like if you take India, there are only 1,000 nephrologists all over the country dealing with almost uh, 30 million population. That is a huge number. So there is a lot of disparity. So we don't even talk to the patient sometimes. They come dialysis, they go. Initially, first prescription is there. Then uh, one month later, they come back. In between, a lot of things are happening. They are stressful. Their anxiety is there. The family is not supporting. There are a lot of holistic approach is not there to the patient. But definitely, we need to combine them as a total, see them in a total, uh, uh, go through their uh, 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 family structure, who are supporting them, what is the problems they are facing, uh, is any stress levels is there, whether they're emotionally um, upset, or all this play a major role. Because definitely during the dialysis, whenever the hypertension increases, uh, the dialysis, they'll have a lot of complications during dialysis. And uh, we need to take the patient as a whole. What most of us uh, do is each specialty will take up each specialty. Like supposing we see nephro uh, kidney, we'll only see the kidney function. We are not taking care of the entire aspect of the holistic approach. But definitely, we should do all these things and uh, uh, combined as a teamwork, it will help. And previously, we have done certain studies and found that it was useful. Uh, we have done yoga and meditation for uh, few of the dialysis patient. Uh, definitely, it was helpful. Okay. At this stage, have you come across any of the clinical evidence platform for traditional medicine? Because as you said, it's more sort of intuitive and sort of scientifically known, you know, happy hormones get released. But what's the impact of all of these interventions? And if that is available to you with evidence, like any study, like clinical actually, trials? Actually, this uh, study, actually, we presented to our ethical committee. And uh, um, some of the uh, ethical committee members uh, say, this is already a proven fact, but uh, nobody has the clinical data. 
okay. and that is what we want to look forward in association with uh, various uh, technology models that uh, whether we will be able to exactly analyze and present as a paper because unless you have evidence and uh, we are not able to uh, show that as an evidence. We presented to our ethical committee, they rejected that uh, proposal saying that yoga and meditation is already proven that it uh, releases <laughs> stress. But what does it, how does it do? Yes. We need a data. We are not able to take out the data, but definitely with your um, association and other things, we will to assess exactly what are the hormones which have been um, able to control, uh, what blood pressure was controlled, what, what are the um, benefits patient had. We have something called a subjective global assessment to whenever we give to patient, he says that that my, this uh, pattern has been better, my sleep pattern has been better, my working style is better. We have a lot of software engineers who are having kidney disease. They say that when they go back to work, they feel uh, energy depleted. They will be not be able to work as uh, efficiently as possible. But all this uh, can be taken as a complete uh, approach and uh, we can look forward for doing more research. Right. This is very interesting. I just want to share very briefly that as Minfi, we are building this clinical evidence platform for integrated medicine in partnership with Intel and, and AWS. Uh, and we are open for all collaboration. I mean, we have already initiated some conversations with your trust. Yeah. But uh, as you said, that this, this will require massive amounts of data. Yeah. Uh, and this data is going to be available from all practitioners who are startups, health tech, Ayush tech. Uh, there are no, number of Ayurveda health tech startups who have come in who can use this platform to actually uh, really do these interventions, uh, what is possible. So this is a very, very exciting field, and I'm really glad that as a non-profit trust organization, you are thinking that far ahead yeah. uh, and into future, and already building into a very integrated approach. Yeah, true. It's very interesting. I think the other thing which you briefly touched, and I wanted to come to you, good people, on that, uh, which is about uh, prevention or personalization or early diagnosis. As they say, prevention is better than cure. So we definitely want to do the treatment. But as you said, you know, if we can catch it early, uh, how can we really, you know, be? Then in that case, we have actually prevented the disease itself. So any, any again. I think this is the that? one area which Sir has talked about is the CKD, right? Mm -hmm. There are many other chronic diseases like cancer where we do not have that mechanism to detect it at the early stage. So we are trying to build up and work with our ecosystem partner to create such a solution where early detection is possible so that we can create such a global system, you know, or such a healthcare system where this prevention is possible by providing or curing with this such and medicines. So that clinical evidence we are creating with our ecosystem partners with the holistic approach, which where we can work with the policy makers like Niti Aayog, with AWS, and we can work collaboratively to join together for this global system. This is really important to drive those discussions, especially for this chronic disease. And the CKD is one of the you know, major aspect where, you know, especially on the private sectors, people are not able to afford. And this is a really costly treatment, which the uh, people are not able to you know, cope up with the expenses. So we are really looking forward to have those collaboration with people like Minfi and AWS to drive such an exposure so that the healthcare system can be improved. And I think you had something to talk about, some very interesting video. Uh, I think I can uh, demonstrate on early diagnosis on something on yes. cancer. The key myeloid leukemia is an aggressive cancer with no known warning signs. So early detection is very hard, if not impossible. In 2018, my grandfather was diagnosed with it and I wanted to use my knowledge in AI to try and make a difference. So I started a research project. My grandfather died a year later and soon after I lost my job. I saw this as an opportunity to invest my time to create a non-profit. I was convinced that there must have been signs that were missed in my grandfather's blood test before he was diagnosed. As finding any information on AML was proving very hard, I began to imagine an open source program that the community could all work together on, sharing information and finding solutions upon. Early detection is something that is still under research around the globe. There is so much still to be done, and though we have made great progress in detection of leukemic lymphoid blasts, 
We do not yet have a solution for early detection of acute myeloid or lymphoblastic leukemia. We need to make partnerships with the hospitals and research centres to get access to the data and the skills that can help us move forward in our mission. If we can work together, we can be the difference. Such inspirational stories. Very nice to hear all of this. We, we have some more questions. I have many more, but I don't want to sort of miss time. If, we, if anybody has got thoughts, questions, we can take them right now as well. I don't want to take away all the time. Other than your personal consultation with the doctor, I think you can ask anything. <laughs> yes, please. Uh, hi, I'm, I'm Siddharth, and I'm actually a healthcare analyst. So this is more he healthcare? Analyst. Analyst, okay. So I actually track these markets on a global level, and this is very much at home for me. Uh, but I'm also an sort of an outsider in this house today. Uh, thank you. But one of the things, like, you know, is even mentioned here right now in that latest video, uh, which spoke about, like, you know, partnering with other uh, uh, healthcare centers, research centers, getting more data. Uh, anything you want to do, prevention or treatment or finding CKDU uh, diagnosis, you need more data. Uh, challenge has always been with India that we don't have digital data to begin with. But there are that, that's changing, obviously. That's changing a lot after the pandemic as well. Are we also thinking about uh, something more home for the uh, people in this room today? Approaches like federated learning, uh, trying to get more data from multiple sources because one of the reasons one of the things that you know when we look at the global markets ai solutions when they are being developed racial bias is being generated it really the ai solution is only as strong as the data you're training it on and if you don't have an indian population data you're not going to get uh, the accurate results so maybe just one of the thoughts to think about to sort of how do we get more data uh, which is something that no the trust is doing which is a phenomenal job by the way but how do you really build it further so that you have more population data to enable a much stronger solution Thank you. Yeah, this uh, regarding your question of uh, CKDU, the data, what has happened, I'll tell you the real facts. That uh, once we started uh, analyzing uh, with collaboration with the Harvard University, they have taken some samples uh, of the water of that place, uh, and then they started analyzing. They found that it was the water which was the problem. And uh, once they started uh, taking samples from every house, you had kidney patient in every house, all of them, at least one of the family member has died. Uh, so after that, uh, the local uh, politicians uh, come into play. Uh, 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 then they say that uh, don't take the samples because uh, it is affecting our uh, this thing. So this is a controversial area. Sometimes you will have real setbacks. And uh, whenever we do any good work in India, that is the problem. We face a lot of resistance from all levels. Even when we started our dialysis, uh, this thing, there were a lot of nephrologists who would say, oh, they are doing it for $4 uh, dialysis, so that is a cheap quality. But now they accept that it has been a quality dialysis, and they see patients over time. Initially, there were a lot of resistance saying that, OK, they, uh, they don't do it very well and uh, this kind of things. So the, the problem, biggest problem in India is acceptance. And uh, innovations and other things and uh, collaborations will make us move forward. That is what we are lacking. And we are always thinking of the old technology. Our test books are very old. Our prescriptions are old. Our, um, seeing patient style is old. Uh, people say that, uh, you know, uh, the best doctor is the one who has a lot of white hair. But the problem is you're not accepting the youngsters, you know. You need to accept the youngsters. There's a lot of technology which is coming up. You need to embrace all these things and go look forward for a, a complete solution of a patient. That is what is happening, that uh, there's a lot of uh, resistance from all angles. See, and definitely you know that whenever your good work is there, uh, in any uh, religion or uh, <laughs> you've seen it from uh, the... Uh, you, so many uh, Upanishads have taught us about these things. Whenever you do good work, there's a lot of resistance from all angles. So the uh, process of analyzing the data, sometimes it will be stopped at the uh, government level. Local politicians will say, don't do any research. 
they want to, we want to do a lot of things because certain areas we go, urban slums you go, you do a research that why are they developing security? You see a lot of uh, young uh, slum guys, they will smoke a lot. Uh, when you counsel them, then the local MLA will come and uh, say that why are you doing this research? What is the point of doing this? Why are you educating them? Let them have their style. It's all about vote bank <laughs> issues and a lot of the things that. So data we want to collect, definitely we want to collect. Now we have almost like 14 affiliated centers all across India. And this will, will all collaborate together and uh, study. There are centers in uh, Delhi as well. There are centers in uh, uh, Ahmedabad. There are centers uh, down south, uh, some in Gujarat. So we'll know the stone belt area, the, uh, the, uh, the northeast part, the south southern region, the western region. So all this data will now be able to analyze the Indian data. And once we have the Indian data, we want you guys to just help us and move forward. That is the way forward we need to do. Because uh, unless we analyze Indian data, it is very difficult to say. And the CKDU has come up in a new entity. And uh, what Western population, uh, if you go to Southeast, Japanese and all, their data is different. They find more of uh, IG and Afropathy, which we see very less here. So all this data is a lot of confusion. We actually need Indian strong data. And uh, we have a CKD registry, which we recently set up. But again, that takes few pockets, you know, uh, some government hospitals, uh, some this thing. But they don't take the entire pool of the, uh, because, uh, as you know, there are a lot of uh, politics in every issue because security registry is also, uh, we need to completely combine in a total, see what is the major uh, contributory factors for our, why so many young people are suffering. We need to analyze those things. Uh, we feel bad when we see a young patient because elderly person, definitely we feel bad, but we see a lot of youngsters coming up with uh, what we see in uh, 50 years. Now we see in 15, 20 years. Recently I saw a patient uh, who had uh, both uh, cancer, ovarian cancer and then kidney disease, 13 years old, young girl. Uh, I was feeling very sorry to initiate on dialysis because you know, it is like uh, you have a tiger in front and a lion behind. Tiger is the cancer. Kidney disease is uh, the line behind. Suffering from both for a 13-year-old female is uh, very uh, uh, depressing and uh, uh, sometimes it brings tears to your eyes. You, uh, whenever you uh, sometimes start them on dialysis, it, uh, it is very... Uh, Just to add to your point, uh, I, I think there is also an initiative, I think Gurpreet briefly mentioned, AWS has a partnership with Niti Aayog on Cloud Innovation Center and that creates the open data sets. Uh, so there is some effort and collaboration which is happening where there will be contributors like Mavi here, they've got the, one of the largest data sets, one million. But I think the Indian database has to be created. I think there were some of the algorithms which we built and we were also struggling because we created a synthetic data. And that synthetic data, as you were just talking about, is a bias uh, is there because of the Western population. But yeah, but there, there is effort going on in that direction. Yeah. I think there is positivity there. So, we find a lot of um, um, other aspects as well, like recently a lot of onco-nephrology aspects, a lot of people give a lot of chemo, they, they develop kidney disease and then you have to protect your own colleagues by saying that it is not chemo related. Then we have new terms like hospital acquired AKI, so we say uh, hospital has induced the AKI, so that is an accepted word. And then we have new terms like a DIRI. We don't uh, directly say that it is drug-induced renal injury. So we just write a short form like, you know, DIRI. Then we, it is understood that it is a drug-induced renal failure, renal injury. So uh, you don't directly tell to your colleague, boss, this is, you are given this drug and this has caused this uh, effect. So it is a small uh, quotation that you write it in the case sheet because documentation is very important now. See, you cannot save your own colleagues sometimes because the kidney problem is there in universal because most of the drugs also cause kidney disease. Like, you know, painkillers cause a lot of kidney disease. A lot of um, uh, orthopedicians uh, write a lot of drugs. We see a lot of youngsters uh, who have been taking painkillers for a long time for low backache. A lot of uh, software guys, low backache. They take chronic NSAID intake. So very softly we write uh, DIRI, all these are our code languages which we use, but whatever baseline is that uh, there are different characteristics and we need to study them. So some will be hospital acquired, 
we uh, we have a new term now hospital acquired ak that uh, doctor see himself induce the kidney injury so that is also there that's unfortunate i think we if we had the time there will be a lot of questions and lot of discussion yeah. to go I, i just want to sort of in the end talk about the topic what we had for today and i think you really brilliantly elaborated on it uh, how can india take lead and especially on your last point if you are thinking about the holistic approach then there will be less drug induced injury there will yeah. be less of hospitalization yeah. uh, less of complications and side effects and i think from the traditional intervention this is going to be a much more integrated approach uh and if we are able to do at the cost price points you are talking about yeah. uh if i think the western world it is almost 100x it's yeah. 400 dollars there yeah. uh we are talking about 4 4 dollars 4 dollars here yes. and so if we solve for india i mean heal in india and i think that uh you know heal india heal by india if we get this right for india i think we can really save the world as well and yeah. contribute to the world level uh really want to acknowledge and thank you for your time and really sharing your thoughts with everyone i think we've run out of time uh but in the end i just want to uh, request all of you to give applause to our doctor and healthcare specialists who really save our lives we have all seen during pandemic really sir thank you very much to share okay we will continue the discussion over tea coffee here i think that room is required for next session thank you thank you, thank you so much all of you for your insightful views on innovating the healthcare space and i hope all of you share the same views